we are going to customize every facet of this to create a functional web design agency website. Apparently, you may need this as a website designer so that you'll be able to advertise your work so that potential customers will reach out to you for you to have some projects done. And your website design agency website should be as fully functional and elegant as possible so that it informs potential customers that you have something amazing for them. To create any website, we need two things. One, domain name, and two, hosting. Domain name is just the website's name, the name of our website. And hosting is the space the website occupies on the internet. So let's start with the hosting of the website. To get hosting for your website, check the description of this video and click on the link Get Hosting. You'll be taken to this website. This hosting company is called Cloudways and it hosts your website and make it load faster. So at this place, click on Get Started Free. Sign up with your details. I would best describe myself as so you can choose any of these. Agree to Terms of Service, click on Start Free. To continue, we have to verify our account. So click on Verify Account. Enter your phone number, click on Send SMS. An activation code will be sent to your phone. Enter that code here, click on Verify. An email verification code will be sent to your email. You follow through to activate your account. So check your inbox for a message like this asking you to activate your Cloudways account. Click on activate account. Now verification process is complete and you see this message account verified successfully. Now we've been redirected to create a server. So these are server options that you can choose from. I'll choose to go with the first one, Digital Ocean. You can decrease the size of the RAM by dragging to one gigabyte. Select a WordPress version to install WordPress. Name your application, the name of this website. So it can be anything such as my website. The name of your server and the name of project. Click on launch now. Wait for a few minutes for the process to be complete. So as you can see here, our server has been successfully created and WordPress has also been successfully installed. Let's now go to applications. And this is our WordPress website. Click on it. The next step is to log in to our website. So here are the login details to log in. You have the admin URL, the username that you provided, the email address, and then a chosen password for you. So click on this. You'll be taken to the dashboard login area where you can log in to your website. Back to the Cloudways platform. Click on the username to get it copied. Paste it in the username area. Click on the password and do the same. Paste it in the password section. Click on login. Now that you have logged in into the website, this area is the admin dashboard. This is the area that we will use to manage the website. So to get started with creating our website, the first step is to install a theme. So a WordPress theme is what defines the appearance of the website. So to install a theme, let's go to appearance, click on themes. So appearance, themes, new theme, upload it, install it. Activate, begin installation of plugins. Install all plugins. Return to plugins installer to activate all of them. Activate, apply. Return to dashboard. Demo importation is the next thing. So go to consult you, theme options, then you go to import demo. And in this case, we are choosing IT solution, import demo. Demo importation is complete. 
So let's visit the website so that we can start to work with it. Let's start from the header. The header here has the logo as well as a vertical navigation menu. So with the logo, you can upload a logo that has a size of about 600 by 160 pixels. So I have a logo. I would like to remove the background of this logo. Then I will resize it. So let me resize it first. So you can use this online tool to resize it. Resizeimage.net. Upload the image. After cropping the image, you will be able to resize it. And here, the most important thing is the height of the logo. Once we give it a height that is normal, the width will not be a problem at all. For instance, if we don't work on the height and we have a height that exceeds this one, we are going to have way too big a logo at this place, and that will not be beautiful. So once we determine the height of it, which is this part, 160, and we maintain the aspect ratio, we can use the results from this resize. So resize image download the image now let's remove background upload the image here to remove the background now download it and we'll be able to use it in the project so dashboard then consult you then you click on theme options so this is the fave icon we can upload an image with the same dimensions such as 512 by 512 32 by 32 or 16 by 16 that will serve as the favor icon. For the logo, we go to header, then to logo. This theme gives you option to be able to upload different versions of the logo. We can remove all the existing ones and upload our logo. Upload the same for tablet and mobile. Select the already existing logo. And for the logo DAC, to, we will use the same logo. So select the logo. Save changes. I always recommend that you refresh the page each time you do a major change so that you see whether the change has been effected. With that, you'll be able to monitor your progress closely as you move on. So let's refresh the page and we see our logo beautifully replaced. The next is this section. Now, how do we edit this slider area here? We are going to enable Elementor Page Builder to help us edit each of these sections. So click on Edit with Elementor. Now when you place the cursor anywhere on this section, you see that the Page Builder is active. And we are going to use this pencil tool to modify the content. Now when you place the cursor on the pencil tool, you see Edit Slider Revolution 6. So it tells you that oh, this section was created with slider revolution. So how do you edit it? Click on the pencil tool, and it shows the details of the specific slider that has been used here. And when you click on edit model, it will take you there to be able to edit it. Alternatively, you can go to the dashboard, then to slider revolution, which is located at the bottom here. And once you click on this, you'll be able to have access to the slider and make changes. Either way, we are good to go. So just click on Edit Model. And here we have our slider ready to be modified. And when you take a look at the slider here on the home page, you see it has a lot of elements on it. It has image, it has text, buttons, and related information. But if you look at this one here, which is the one that actually appears there, you see that most part has been covered. So to be able to see all the elements on it, you can close this one, or you'll be able to modify them one after another here. But to have a visual display of the elements, you can close this. And still, some of the sections are hidden. So what I usually do is to minimize the browser window so that I'll be able to see the elements that are underneath the ones on the top here. You can use Control plus minus to reduce the window. So having reduced the window now to about 67%, you'll see all the elements that are available to be modified. Now that we are ready to modify this section, the question is, 
what are we going to type what content are we going to add so how do we find the content to add to the website if this is your own you are going to create this website for yourself as a website for your agency then apparently you have to plan the content that you want to use on the website and of course you can draw inspiration from some other websites their choice of words not to copy exactly what they have there but to know what to compose to make something meaningful that will resonate with your customers and drive them to you for sales so for website design agency you provide website design and development and there are related services such as search engine optimization digital marketing social media marketing and any that is within the scope of your services so for example let's say that you want to write something about that so you click on the element you want to modify so something like we create here you can see that there's an HTML code that has been added to underline the text here but if you don't want that you can just type your own content without any of those styles another test is here if you take a close look at this section here you would also see there are social media icons here this is essential if you want to integrate your social media links also here so that the moment someone clicks on them it takes them to your social media pages in which case you'll be able to do them here by clicking on this section on the right hand side here you see those handles and then this section is where you have to insert the link so facebook.com for example slash your company then you insert your URL to your Facebook page you can do the rest for the other ones and if there are some that you won't need you just have to simply delete those ones or if you don't really want to keep this feature on the home page at this section you can simply right click on this section and delete it there is a video button here as well if you look on the slider you can see there is a video button here and so if you have an explainer video or anything like that to advertise your business and you want to place it here actually placing the video here um, I don't see the possibility of people actually watching because it is just a button not so much attention is drawn to it so if you want to keep it anyway you can click on that and then insert your video URL at the specific section that is indicated here and as usual if you want to get rid of it you can simply delete it as well there is a button here which is contact us button it could be a button that leads to any page at all once it is a call to action button that will really make the user perform an action that will likely lead to a sale that is a good thing to do so if you have any page it could be your pricing page your contact us page or anything that is worthy of attention that you want your users to do you can have a button here and lead them there as well as you can see this also has a drag and drop feature where you can drag the elements and keep them at anywhere at all on a slider it could be anywhere so you can place it at specific locations and they will show just as you place them and if you want to edit this for example you simply click on it and then you have the test which you can modify at the right hand side here to whatever you want probably something like check our pricing that is if you want to do that or whatever at all that you want to do just place that call to action test here and then the next thing to do is to make the button clickable so that once a user clicks on it it takes them to the page where we want that action to be taken or where we want them to take a look so if you want to add a link to that so that it becomes clickable you go to actions here and then you can see simple click here when you hover over it 
So click on that. And then you have the action here already. Action type is simple click. Then there is supposed to be a link here. So once you get the URL or the link of the page, you simply insert that link here so that once the user clicks on that, it takes the user to that page. Apparently, you can best do this when you complete the website and decide which page should have that link here. The next thing we can modify here is the picture that we can see here. So we right click on that section then select edit. Then because it is a picture we want to modify, we select the media library and select the picture we want to use. So click on media library. Then as usual, you can either upload a new image or select an already existing image. In using images for your project, you would need professional images, eye-catching images, such as the one here. But if you don't have images such as this, there is another free resource that you can make use of. Another type of images that you can use in your projects, in your designs, whether graphic design, your website design, anything that has to do with design. And with that, I would like to introduce you to Andro. Andro is an awesome design resource. You'll be able to use their images for any project, for commercial projects, and there are no limitations. What they give you is free vector images. And these images can be used for every project, free of charge. So to be able to browse the illustrations, you go to andro.co, create beautiful websites, products, and applications. Go to browse now. And here you have a whole lot of illustrations. For any idea or any design at all that you would like to do, you'll be able to find resources here to do that. If you scroll down, you see that we have a whole lot of images which are constantly being updated. And you can actually search for a category. So in this wise, let's say we are searching for vectors or we are searching for illustrations for a website design project. Then we can type something like website. And here are illustrations that can be used for a website design. One beautiful thing about this is that you can use your own branding. So if you click on the color here, you'll be able to change to any color at all that exists. These are some main colors, but you can also use codes to generate new colors. So let's say that your design is this color. Once you click on this, then it generates all the images in that color for your brand. So in this case, let's say we want one that will advertise a web design agency, for instance. So you go through and see which one you would like to use. You have download options to download this as SVG, SVG which stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. So Scalable Vector Graphics is a file format that allows you to display vector images on your website. And we can download the SVG and use in our website project. And if we want to use the same picture for blog posts and social media, then we download the PNG format. So in this case, let's download the SVG. We want to use this image we have downloaded as a background for our slider. So one thing we need to know so that we can design it appropriately is the dimension of this place. Now how do we know the dimension so that we choose exactly that? If you go to media library, the current image that has been used there is this one. If you click on this, you see the image dimensions 1920 by 912 pixels. So we are going to create an image with the same dimensions so that we can insert our downloaded vector and do some basic designs. So I would like to use an online to canva.com. And here I'm creating a new design. So create a design custom dimensions, the width being 1920 as we have determined, and the height, 912. Create new design. Go to uploads and upload this image there so that we can use in the project. Drag and drop. And as said earlier concerning SVG, that they are scalable. You can see that you can really scale it up. 
scale it to almost any dimension and the quality remains the same or scale it down so this feature of SVG makes it a great choice for responsive web design you don't lose the quality of the image so placing this image somewhere download the result and let's use this in our project so you right click and edit it media library and we drag this newly downloaded image insert it and this is what we have now now let's preview this to see the design itself and clearly from this appearance there is the need to modify the text that we typed to bring this word down and possibly shift it to the left a bit so close the preview click on the test and let's bring the websites down or it depends on whatever you've typed here anyway but this is just to tell you that you'll be able to modify the test in any way that you want and you have to check as you move on so that when the need arises to do something to shift something to where it's supposed to be then you can do that in this case as an example I may have to shift this a bit to the left and the test here as well for alignment and you can drag the whole element and place it anywhere at all if you realize you make a mistake undo it now let's take a look at the preview again so preview so it seems the same let's edit the content again preview and we can view in various screen sizes so this is the desktop version this is the notebook and because of how it appears on this device we may need to do some adjustments as well so you have to take your time and do all of these you go to the other version and there is a need to adjust a little and then to the last one too the same is true so you can actually do for all these and by the time you are through with this you would have a design that is able to appear nicely on every device size at all that will also mean that you would have to go to your design and possibly reduce the size or reposition it and do the same for the test you can send it up to the right as well as every element at all that is available you can resize the elements on it and then as you do it you will be checking the preview to take a look at how it will finally appear when it is published so this is a basic idea regarding how to create sliders using slider revolution and vector graphics so that you can have eye-catching designs so to customize it you can follow the same approach get an image that defines the idea or the brand the website that you are creating search for an appropriate keyword choose the color of your brand then download the image that you want to use SVG or PNG and use for your website project once you finish making changes don't forget to save the work apparently the best way to see what has been done is to go back to the home page refresh it and see what has happened such as this so in this case when you realize the need to still make modifications then you go back and do so accordingly for instance in this case the font might be too big and not so fitting and you can reduce it and possibly move this upwards a bit you can also click on the individual elements and move them around and as said earlier if you want to have a look at the whole thing at a glance then you may have to reduce the size of the window with control plus minus key doing that you see that the button is far away from the design so there is a need to bring that upwards a bit now we can save it and have a look at the site again taking a look at this I'm satisfied with this design 
otherwise I would have to continuously perform additional modifications drag and drop them around to see which one will be suitable if we want the slider to be the first on the page then we have to get rid of this section let's see how practically we can do that let's publish the page first our page is live so we can have a look at it we want to deal with this to get rid of this so that the slider becomes the first one at the top section Elementor has a section that helps you to hide the header but this theme also comes with an option that helps you to easily hide the header so let's use the one for the theme so click on edit page not edit with Elementor but edit page and here once we scroll down we have page title and here we can hide the page title from this section so go to hide then update now we can take a look at the page and this is our page with the slider as the first element apart from the headers here so this is basically how to work around sliders how to effectively arrange elements or the contents of a website when we talk about elements or the contents apparently we are referring to anything that appears on a web page a typical web page has images it has text icons links and things like that and as a professional website developer or designer you should know how to effectively arrange these in a very beautiful way so that they can have an appealing visual effect to whoever takes a look at them if you take a look at how elements appear on websites this is a typical example this is what we call the CSS box model CSS stands for cascading style sheets and it is a language that is used to style websites and to create layouts for it taking a look at this CSS model this is exactly how every element appears on a website to take this one for instance we have this test element and this test element is within a container now outside of the container is a margin that separates that container from other ones just at the edges of the container is a border and within the container is where we have our test element just around the test elements are spaces that we call pardon so let's take a close look at this and how exactly this affects any website we will do that by taking a look at these elements here as a real world example now we mentioned that within a container are elements and there is padding there is border and there is a margin beyond the borders patterns and margins are two important elements in web design they essentially do the same thing they create extra space but as to whether to use margin or padding will depend on where it is that you are modifying let's take a close look at these three elements here these are three rectangles and within each of these are some other elements clearly the outside of each of these is a margin so there is a margin between this first one and this second one and also between this second one and the third one and even from this you can say that the margin is what has shown here in green that said when do we use margins and when do we use patterns let's start with margins one thing is clear here that margins are applied at the outside of your element so if you take this whole thing the text and the icons here as our element 
and this being the border, then the white spaces around this rectangle is the margin. So from here we can say that margins are applied to the outside of elements and they affect how far your element is from other elements. As you can see here, there is some small space between this and that. And we can either reduce this or increase it. Now with pardon, we are talking about the inner of this container, starting from where this icon is to the last letter here. Every space around this is known as pardon. So pardon is applied inside of your element and they affect how far your element is from the border here. So we are going to use these principles in our website design project. Let's start by editing the page with Elementor. So edit with Elementor. So here I'm going to demonstrate how these two principles, pattern and margins, how they really work and why you would need to apply these throughout your project. These are various components. If you want to modify the contents of each of these components, then as usual, you use this pencil tool here. And if you place the cursor on it, you see edit fancy box. So clearly, the name of this element as done by the theme author is fancy box. So once you click on that pencil tool, you'll be able to modify the contents here. Now more than that, we have the margins here and the patterns as well. Talking about the pattern, it is apparently the space between this whole thing and the next border. The next border is this. So this white space will be the pattern. So for instance, let's say that the top here, which we refer to as pattern top. Let's say we increase this number to something. Let's say 50. Now having done this, we can now see the space between this and the border. But there is something to here we have to take note of, which is the values are linked together by default. So once we do for pattern top, it will be applied for pattern bottom, pattern left, and pattern right. So we can unlink the values so that we'll be able to work on the individual patterns when we deem fit. So let's say we go back to zero, and then here we are unlinking the values. So whatever we do at each of these pattern sections will not affect the other side. So let's say once again that pattern top is 30. A pattern of 30 pixels between this element and the space at the top, but within the same container. And let's say we want to do the same for the right hand side and give a value. We can enter the value directly or we can use the arrow here to increase it. And as you are increasing, if you check the right hand side, which is of course right pattern, you see the changes being effected. You see that there is a space being created between this whole element and then the border. As you can see, the element moving, the space being created. That is how pattern works. So let's say we want to restore the values to default. Zero and zero. So clearly, the pattern will create a space within this element or container, while the margin will create an extra space at the outside of the container. Let's use these ones too as another example. These are two different elements. This is a test element and that is also a test element. So if you want to modify this and create a space around this test alone, then clearly we are going to use pattern. But if you want to distance this from that, then we will use margin. So you click on this pencil tool, then you go to advanced 
And here we want to unlink the values. In actual sense, there is a space around this test, both left and right, which means that there is already an existing value for this, but it might not show here. But we can still modify this. So in this case, let's say we want to either reduce or increase the spaces around this test, which is pardon. So let's talk about pardon right, which is this area. So if you increase it, so let's work on the pardon left, which is the space from the border to the element itself. So with pardon left, let's increase this by using the arrow up here and see the result. So as you increase it, you see that more and more white space is created between the border and the test. You can go back to zero. For padding top, this is what will happen. A lot of space will be produced up there, as well as the other areas. The same will be true of those areas too. So having understood this clearly, we are going to use pardon in most of the cases. And when the need arises to use margins, we would equally do so. Let's start from this section. When we hover over this, you see that the margin for this whole area is around this place. And each of these elements also have their individual margins. So let's place the Kesa in the middle here. Now, clicking on the middle of the section means we are selecting the whole section. So clicking on that section, we will now work on the layout, the style, and then the advanced settings. So advanced. And clearly here we can see that the bottom has 26 pixels margin. The top here has 90 pixels pardon. Now you may have a different value because I must have changed some of the values. But no matter whatever values you have for pardon and margins, you can still modify it accordingly to create a very beautiful visual effect. So let's start. What is the motive in the first place? The motive is to reduce the space between this and that. So clearly, we want to reduce this white space here. So let's tackle the pardon top. So the pardon top apparently here is the distance between this whole margin and this area. As we've said earlier, that is the space between the element and the border. So here it is 90 pixels. So let's say we want to reduce this to a minimum value. The number is here. We can directly type the number, a reduced number here, or we can use the arrow down to decrease it and see the effect as we do so. So clicking on the down arrow here, you see that the gap between the element and the border is reducing. So if you reduce it to the point where you can say you've attained the desired result, you would leave it at that point and then update the changes. Let's work on this section too. So by clicking on the middle here, we can work around the space that is the pattern and the margin of this whole element as well. Go to advanced, unlink the values so that we would know what to add or what to subtract. So let's unlink them first. The space between that and the next element here, all of them are zero, zero. And you should understand that this point, clicking on the middle here is going to modify the whole rectangle. So here too, it is clear that this white space is the space that was produced from the image. So this whole thing is an image. If it is an image and not necessarily a white space by the editor here, then what we have to do is to go back to the image that we inserted and to crop this part away. And now this is what we have. There is no undue space between the first element here 
and the second one here. And in this case, if you want to comfortably increase the space by introducing more white space between this slider and the next element here, then you can do that by clicking on any of them and then inserting the white space accordingly. Advanced, pad and top, then we can increase it. So this is solely your discretion. As you increase the value and you get to where you think the space is appropriate, then you can stop it and update it. Having done this, let's now insert some content as part of our website design project. Something like our services. Then this as well. Some content. So this is where you might apply some of the techniques we have learned. This whole layout has been set to 50% of this and 50% of that. As you increase it, you are rather creating more space and pushing this content away from that. So to bring this here, there are two options. Either to decrease the layout so that it becomes something like 70 for this place and 30 for this place. Or better still, because each of them has 50-50, to bring this content here, you have to use negative margin. Why do we use negative margin? Let's reduce this value to zero and see what happens. So you can see that as you move down, the content shifts to the left. So even when you get to zero, the content remains at where it is supposed to be. And to go beyond that point, you can further reduce, then you enter into negative. And as you reduce it, you can see the content moving to the left so that it goes beyond its demarcated margins. So you can use the same principle in this regard. But in this scenario, the better thing to do is to reduce the percentage allocated to this column. So if you hover over the section, you see there is a layout icon here. This arrow is preventing this from appearing. So let me bring this downward somewhere. So hovering over this, you see there's a layout icon here. This is layout. And the inscription is edit column. If you click on that, you see that the column width has been set to 55.2%. So if we reduce this, then this one will increase because the two will sum up to 100. So let's change this to something like 35, meaning that the rest will be 65 for this place. And go back to sets this one to the default margin zero. So click on this section, which is the right column. And we made the left margin minus 80 pixels. So let's now change that back to zero. So obviously you may find yourself doing a lot of trials and errors so as to get the perfect match. Let's get to the next section. So you can find content for all these sections. And let's focus on the layout and the appearance, including colors and those related. So to start with, I'll use another section. Let's say this section. There are basically three aspects that you can handle here. The layout, which has these, as to whether the content, the width should be boxed, as we see here, or we want it to be full section, full width so that there will not be any gaps at the left or at the right. We can determine that here. You can increase the width also here or reduce it from here. Then the gap between the columns. So you can go through one after another and see exactly how this works. The height, we, we can set a minimum height or to make it fit to the screen as per the aspect ratio. Then the vertical alignment too we can do something about that, as well as all these sections. Whether we want to stretch the section, or we don't want to stretch it, so that we decrease the whole width, we can determine that here as well. The next is the style. We have all these aspects. The background, the background overlay, the border, the shape divider, and the typography. Talking about the background, yes, the background can have an image, which is background image or it can have a color. So here, clearly we see the background color is black. 
And if you want to change the background of this, we can do that to a different color. So the type of background here is classic. We have gradient. So that for gradient, you have about two colors or more. Those two colors can be used to create a gradient where one side of the section becomes deeper to the other color and then the other side of the background becomes lighter or to the other color. So a gradient between those two colors. We can equally use a video as the background too where we can insert the video URL here or we can insert a slideshow where we pick some images from the media library as the background. In most cases, you may want to use the classic type of background where you have two options, either to use a background color or background image. The next is the style. We have all these aspects, the background, the background overlay, the border, the shape divider, and the typography. Talking about the background, yes, the background can have an image, which is background image, or it can have a color. So here, clearly, we see the background color is black. And if you want to change the background of this, we can do that to a different color. So the type of background here is classic. We have gradient. So that for gradient, you have about two colors or more. Those two colors can be used to create a gradient where one side of the section becomes deeper to the other color and then the other side of the background becomes lighter or to the other color. So a gradient between those two colors. We can equally use a video as the background too where we can insert the video URL here or we can insert a slideshow where we pick some images from the media library as the background. In most cases, you may want to use the classic type of background where you have two options, either to use a background color or background image. So as a website designer, you are going to make use of colors. And it is imperative, therefore, that you know something about colors when it comes to building web pages. Now, there are various color systems. And the one that we use in website designing or with computers is the additive combination of colors, the additive color system. Now, we know that colors are generated by mixing primary colors. And in this additive color system, it is a combination of red, green, and blue. And so the color is determined by the extent to which these three colors, red, green, and blue, are mixed. For decimals, it ranges from 0 to 255. And what we call hexadecimals ranges from 00 to FF. And we are going to go through this so that you have a clearer understanding of this. So we have said that when it comes to the decimal, it is ranging from 0 to 255. Let's take red as a typical example. In this case, red has 255 as the highest value. And red has 0% of green and 0% of blue. That is, it has 0 over 255 for green as well as for blue. But with red itself, it has a complete 255. And with that, we are able to produce this decimal value and a corresponding hexadecimal value. Now, because 255 is the highest value, it is equated to FF. And 0 is equated to 0, 0 on the hexadecimal scale. Let's work around this to have a clearer understanding. For instance, let's take green into consideration. So it means that green has 0 of red. Green doesn't have any element of red at all. Because for primary colors, you can't mix others to get them. They are colors that exist on their own. And in this example, being the additive system, red, green, and blue 
are primary colors that necessarily don't need the addition of some colors to generate them. They are rather the basis of generating other colors. So in that case, green is 0% or in this wise, 0 out of 255 of red. It means it has no element of red at all, but it has a complete set of green. That is 255, a full percentage of green. And it has nothing of blue. Hence, in the RGB system, that is red, green, blue system, red which represents the first zero, zero, will be zero because green doesn't have red. Then, J, which is the next value for green, is full, so it will be FF. And then, zero, zero for blue because green doesn't have any element for blue. So, this is the system we are going to use. To see the same for blue, blue has a complete set of blue by itself. It has no element of red nor for green. So this is its hexadecimal value. Let's just combine the numbers and see something. Let's just mix them anyhow. So let's take this color for example. This color has 229 of red, 236 of green, and 78 of blue. Each of these have their corresponding hexadecimal values. Hence, the hexadecimal value for this color is the one that we can see here. Now, we are going to use this extensively in our website projects. And you notice that by having a combination of different colors on this scale, you can have a total of about 16 million colors approximately and this gives you unlimited number of colors that you can use in any project at all. The same principle is true of this as this one being the interactive color wheel if you place on any at all it tells you the value of red, the value of green, the value of blue out of 255 and their corresponding hexadecimal values so that it gives you the color code the html color code of that color for instance if you place it here you are able to take different shapes we have this this and that the first one has this of red this is also there and then the other one and you can copy this any of these and use it in your project so if you go to your home page, instead of the color black, and you can see that the black has a hexadecimal value of 000 up to 6. It means that black has no element of red, neither does it have an element of blue nor green. That is why it is 00 for all of them. So if you press the color that we just copied, you see that it is giving you a different color gradient, a different color altogether. And the code of the color is the one that we can see here. But the question is, how do you know exactly which color shades to use so that you don't use colors that are too bright or too dull, that are unprofessional? How do you know which colors to use? There is an online tool that is so helpful in this regard. It is colorhunt.co. So if you come to this website, colorhunt.co, it gives you the various colors that you can use. These are for designers, so they are colors that are appealing to the eye. Here you have a wide range of colors to use, and you can search for colors. So let's say you want colors that are in the form of red, professional colors for that matter. So you can now choose any by just clicking on the code. Once you click on the hexadecimal code, it copies for you and you can use in your website project. For instance, if we paste that here, you see that is the color produced and this color is beautiful. If you want a different color, let's say blue, then it gives you all of those in blue. If it is this one that is appealing, you copy this and here we are using it as a color, background color then 
you can paste that and have your beautiful color at the background. If you want to clear it and change to another color, you can replace what is here with that color. Or you can simply clear it and then paste another color here. So let's say I now want to use this color. Then I'll be able to add that color instead. And then I update the changes. If you want to use a background image instead of background color, you can equally do so here. So clicking on this will make you choose an image. It takes you to the media library where you can select an image or upload a new one. So let's apply what we have learned regarding pattern and margins and colors and all the other things that we've learned. Let's apply them in modifying our content. So if this is a website for website design agency, then our services are around website design, search engine optimization, e-commerce, digital marketing, and the like. So let's take this first one as website design. So you click on this, and then the heading is website design, and then the content is equally here. Then underneath it is a list of items. If you want to list some items here, you can do so. And if you don't want them, you can get rid of them. Here at the layout section, you can actually choose between different design options. So this is one example which gives you this design. We have yet another one. You can explore between these and select which one is desirable to your eyes. This is the default one. And others are equally here. We have this. We have that and then this. So if you go through them, you'll be able to settle on which one you want to use. Once you settle on that, you should also make the others have the same design so that there will be uniformity. So if you want to edit this and make it the same thing, then the first thing to do is to edit the content. So let's say you want to talk about e-commerce websites or online stores. Then clearly the content should also be about e-commerce websites. So something about that, like this. Scroll up, change the layout to the one similar to this. And then the icon should also depict what we are talking about here. So clearly we have to choose an icon that is about e-commerce websites or online stores. The icon type here is image and we have icon. So if we don't have the image, then we can use an icon. And for the icon, we have a whole lot in the icon library. So just choose the image of a cart in set. Then the third service could be search engine optimization, SEO. Layout. Select a layout, then at this point you can update the changes. There is yet another section here. If you can find creative ways of editing this section, you can do so. To replace this with an image, then the content here should equally correspond to that. If not, then we could delete the whole section and replace it with our own unique section or content and style. This is another section too, and we have options to either edit it or to delete it. And this one is also used to display some statistics, such as those we see here. Number of clients, number of team members, number of awards, reviews, years of experience, if any. We can include such data here as well. Otherwise, we can get rid of them. As I always suggest, to be able to know exactly what this section is, you simply place the cursor here on the pencil tool, then 
you see the information that is placed. And this one is edit case study carousel. So apparently it tells you this portion or this section, the element that was used is case study. So if you search for case study here, you see case study carousel. And that is what was used to create this section. And to know whether you would need this section or not, if you go to the dashboard, and this is part of the theme features, it is not a default WordPress feature. For the default WordPress feature, the only type of post is the normal post that we add here, the blog post or the articles that you can add to the website. But themes also come with special types of posts that we call custom posts. And a typical example of this custom post is the case study that you can see here. Another one is the services as well as the portfolio. They are custom posts and they display in a similar way as the normal posts also display. So for case study, for instance, which we have got to, if you click on that to take a look at how it works, you see that they are added just as we add posts also to the website. So for instance, if you want to edit this one, it has a title, it has a category it has been assigned to, then the page itself is here. You can edit with Elementor and the featured image is also here. And that's exactly how it displays on the home page as you can see here. So if you think you can find a creative way of using this section, you can do so. If you don't want to use the section, then you can simply right click here and delete it. Typical of websites for web design agencies is a pricing plan. There are pricing plans that you have to include so that your visitors would have an idea as to how much their website will cost according to their requirements. So let's add a pricing plan to the home page. We can add a new section here. So click on the add section. And here we have two main options. Either to create a new item altogether by using the elements that we can see on the left hand side here, or to select an already existing template. I would like to use an already existing template. And you can equally use that, or you can better still do everything all by yourself, which is also easy by just dragging. In this case, it is pricing. So if you search for pricing, you have pricing and pricing multi. You can choose one of them, drag them here, and then add new items. To use a pre-existing template, one that has been designed already, you just click on that one here, add template. Add template will take you to the template library these are those that come with Elementor. Some of them are pro versions. Others are also free that you can easily insert. But to have access to those that came with a the theme, we have to go to my templates. And here we have various pricing designs that you can choose from. You can choose them one after another to see exactly how they appear. So that in the end, you can choose one. So let's just choose one as random. Pricing year style two, insert. And this is how that looks like. It is really beautiful. Let's just have a look at the other ones so that we can decide which one you would want to use. You add a new, different one with a new design altogether. Um, let's say pricing year to insert that. And this is how that also looks like. So between this and that, you can easily choose which one you prefer. And let's say that we settled for the first one then we can get rid of the second one so that we can work on the first one. So we can now edit each of them one after another. Most pricing tables are in this form where we have the packages in sequential order. So let's say that the first one, as you can see here, is new business. We have small business, growing business, and large business. So in something like an ascending order of magnitude, Others can make it bronze, silver, gold, platinum, or let's say basic, standard, extended, premium. Whatever packaging plan you want to name, it is just to make it something that your customers can easily identify. They can easily mention that I want to choose the new business plan. I want to choose the small business plan. 
the gold plan, the standard plan. So you can use any name to name those sections as well. So let's work on the first one for instance. Then you have your title here. There's a description which this present plan has named number of employees, one to four employees and all of that. So you can choose to change this according to your own message that you want to convey to your customers. So you can change the various elements one after another. You can get rid of the description or enter a description that is so fitting to this plan and as to whether you recommend that, as you can see here, the best choice as they have selected, indicating that they are recommending this plan to their customers. And an icon which you can use or otherwise. Then these are the features. For features, you can add them one after another. Let's say that this is a basic plan, as we can see here. And for this one, you want such features as this. So for example, this one, we have basic plan, 10 design revisions, we have five pages, and these are other options, site map and RSS feed creation, search engine submission. We have the standard plan, which is 20, so you can see if this one is 10, that one is 20. Five pages, 25 pages. Power plan, so the whole thing is increasing as we move up the pricing table. You can search on the internet and get some idea as to how to really go about this. Let's use this example. So for basic plan, for instance, let's assume that we are going to give our customers these features. The basic plan has a domain name, it has cloud web hosting. So we see the cloud is still on the same line with the domain name. We can introduce a line break. The line break will ensure that the next element moves to the next line. So we can insert line breaks at the end of each sentence or each feature so that they will be aligned beautifully. So this is a real world example that if our customers choose the new business plan, then they are going to get domain name, cloud hosting, free SSL, search engine optimization done for them, a blog section, WhatsApp chat integration. They will get hourly backups, up to seven pages designed for them. They will have three gigabyte disk space and one email address. So having done that, it means that when you move to the next section, all these ones will increase and obviously the price will also increase so indicate your price here let's say 600 Ghana cities or whichever currency you are using whatever currency that you are using but this also implies that if you want to use the pricing table feature then you have to do an in-depth analysis do some research online and get a fair idea as to the average cost how your competitors charge for the same thing that you are doing so that you can adjust it accordingly and make your price as competitive as possible. So you can do the same for the remaining ones as well. If you need just, let's say you have just two pricing options, then you can delete the rest. If you have three, of course, then you can delete the rest as well. And then you can delete the column too. Then our heading two is very important. So something like our pricing plans. We might include a statement here that will encourage our potential customers. And then the gap between this whole section and the pricing table is too wide. So we may want to reduce it. So go here and then clearly we can see the pattern bottom is too large. It is 44 pixels. So we can reduce this. We can use the arrow to reduce it so that we can see virtually whatever the result will be. Let's see whether we can reduce this one to advanced. Pardon bottom is 115. And we can reduce this to. So when you think you are okay with whatever the result is, then you can leave it. This is the heading for this. So this section shouldn't distance itself so much away from the heading. When we compare this whole area with the next section, there are two different areas altogether. We can create a whole big space between the two items because they are unrelated. The next section is this whole box. Now this is yet another section that some websites have. 
You can use this one to also showcase some features as well. But if you think you don't have anything in mind to use this section for, then as usual you can delete the section. We will keep the block section here. But before that we can also insert a testimonial section, which is one feature that is really characteristic of most websites. Testimonials because you are selling a product or a service and your potential customers should have some level of trust and you have to gain that kind of credibility in their eyes before they might want to proceed with you. So adding testimonials is a way of showing social proof to your potential customers. So you can add a section. We are going to add testimonials. Add a new section. Choose the number of columns. Click on the plus symbol here and search for testimonials. And here we have some options you can choose from. Testimonial, testimonial carousel, testimonial grid. You can choose this one after another and see which one is best that you would want to use. So choosing the first one for instance, dragging and dropping into this section, we can see how this works. This is the test or the content of the testimonial. This is the image of the person giving the testimonial, the name of the person, and the person's title, whether designer, CEO, or whoever it is. So let's delete and check the other ones available. Testimonial carousel. And if we add an item, you can see how that also looks like. An image, the title of the person. So let's just work on this and see how it is. This will be more beautiful. So the image of the person giving the testimonial. Let's choose a pre-existing image to see how it is. Later we can change it. Insert. And description here will be the contents of the testimonial. So after taking a testimonial from the client, you can showcase that at the description section here. The title could be the name of the person. So the name of the person giving the testimonial. And then the position of the person let's say CEO of a particular company. So this is a typical example. And then you can add another item which will also appear at the right hand side here. And you can add as many as possible. You can also duplicate what you have already included. That is by clicking on this copy section here. You duplicate them and you can make changes to the individual sections in there. So that's about how to add testimonials to the website. And of course, this should have a heading. So you can duplicate this section because it is also a heading. Then we can bring the duplicated one here, or you can add a heading by adding a section up here. Search for heading drag and drop it here and start a heading such as testimonials and you can align it in the middle or the left wherever you choose to keep it content alignment center subtitle could be something like this is what our clients say about us update the changes the next section is this area, which is the blog. And this is very important because you are able to use this medium to educate your customers. Now, when your customers have enough knowledge about what it is that you do, then they'll be in the best position to make informed decisions. You give them content, you educate them, give them value. Then they will see the essence of doing business with you. So typical of these website design agencies are posts about website design and the other related services that they engage in. So you can look for such posts and post some of them here. Some also can include events that you hold in your company or general posts about your business so that you can have that kind of relationship with your customers. Before we get into modifying this blog section, let's say we want to add call to action button. This call to action 
areas or buttons, as their name imply, will enable the customers to take some action on a website. Else they will just read from top to down and they wouldn't know exactly what to do. So to guide them to take action, we can include a call to action area or section in this regard. So adding a section, selecting one column, we can choose an element here, call to action. drag and drop it, some text in the title area and optionally you can add a description or more text to that and then button text, something like get started or start now or request for a quote or anything like that that will prompt them to take an action so that they contact you. There is a button link. So once you create a page such as contact us page or request a quote page, you can include the link to that page here so that once they click on this button, it leaves them there for them to continue with that. So let us say that we want to add some more features to this area. So we have button icon. You can add an icon here to this button. We have button style here, so we can modify the button style. The one here is default. Clicking on the drop down here, we have a whole lot of them that we can choose from. Default effects, primary, secondary. So you go through all these and see which one you would like to use. Secondary hover, we have third one, test white. So I'm going back to the default one. And then we have box background color. We can change the background of this box from black to whatever color we deem appropriate. And then we have case animate. This one is going to help us to create an animation of the whole area. For instance, now there is no animation. So if you click on this drop down, we want to choose bounce as an example. Let's see what happens. So this is what will happen if you choose bounce. You can test the remaining ones as well. This is flash, pause, rubber band. This is shake. And a whole lot. In fact, you can play around it. This is so beautiful. and many of them as well. So once you determine which one you want to use, you can keep that one. Let's try a few ones too. Let's bounce out, fade in, this is another one, flip. So you update it when you, you are through with choosing the one you want. The next section we talked about earlier is the blog section. So editing this section, you can simply add a title such as our blog or recent news or anything like that. You can type something here too or delete it if you have nothing. And to have the articles displayed here, you do that from the dashboard. The blog post that you add, so posts, then you can add some new posts. So if you go to add new, then you can add some new articles and they will appear at this section. The next section is the contacts form or the contact section. We have address, then numbers to call, and then we have email addresses. So you can edit these accordingly. On the right hand side here is where we have to do some work. In addition to just modifying the test here, we have to do some work as well. When you click on this section, edit contact form seven, we have source settings, select form, then the form style, and then the animation. Now select form, if you click on that, you see that the form that has been selected here is home contact form five. Let's go to the dashboard and work on that form. So dashboard, then go to contact. 
the plugin that has been used to create this contact form is called contact form 7 and we have various contact forms that are here the one that is displayed here once again the name is home contact form 5 so let's identify that and edit it we have home contact form 5 click on edit the first tab here which is the form you can see how this form was actually created taking a look at the form here it appears so beautiful but this is the code behind it you don't have to write any code actually you just have to modify the content that is here so for example you have first name last name email phone number and message we may want to retain all these sections but we can delete or replace the placeholder here the placeholder is the one that is in the middle here the one that shows the customer or the user what exactly they can type in the test area there for instance first name the placeholder is what we see here and then last name as well let's modify that in fact we can keep the whole section empty we can equally leave placeholders to guide them as to what we really want even though they are the headings up here so for instance the first one being first name we can modify it if we want to keep the word first name here we can still keep it then we see the placeholder here we can replace this placeholder or we can delete it if we don't want any placeholder the next placeholder is here then email the placeholder is info at gmail.com and that's what we can see here we can leave it empty or we can type something like enter your email address but once there is a heading here as email address I think this label is enough however you can still choose to keep it but if you don't want to keep it then you can delete it and if you want to replace it then you can type something such as enter your email address the next section is phone number and you can see number here as placeholder your number you can keep it empty or type something then the message section is equally there then this button make an appointment is the one that we can see here this actually is the submit button so it can be submit send request for a quote get started or anything like that save changes and we can take a look at this after updating this section to refresh the page and see how this will appear so as you can see the changes that has been made are those reflecting here let's continue with the settings for this form and if you come to the form area we have mail let's work on that when someone comes to the page and sends some details who should be the receiver of this message now the recipient's email address is what should be here therefore and it is recommended that the recipient's email address should be one related to the website so let's say that your website is website.com then your email address could be info at website.com if it's not related to the website there would be some configuration problems that is how contact form 7 works there are some contact forms that will allow you to enter any email address at all but for contact form 7 the recipient's email address should be related to the website domain as you can see here sender email address does not belong to the site domain so they strictly want you to make it related it means that here too the email address should be one related to your website and this here indicates the from name so we have to and then from the from the first part is the name and then the second section is the email address so this could be the name of the website then the subject the subject is what has been entered by the user on this form there is no area for the user to enter a subject so you can include a default subject here let's say that this form the main purpose of the form is to request for website design services then the subjects could be since you are not allowing the user to enter their own subject and it is a subject that you can set by default then it could be something like new website design request 
Then this section is additional headers that is replied to. And you can see that by default it is your email. Why this short code your email? If you go to the top, it tells you that you can edit the mail template here. In the following fields, you can use these mail tags. This is how it works. If a user comes to the form and enters their, their first name, such as Ben, you as the website owner, the one who is actually going to receive this message, should receive this section just as the user typed it. In that case, in the message body, that tag, your name, is what has been indicated here. So this tag, your name, has been assigned or has been tagged to this section. So the moment the user enters Ben as their first name, you have used the tag your name, this one, to collect that field. It means that in the message body, you see the name Ben as the email that you receive from the user. The same applies to the email, the subject, and then the phone number. But clearly, because there is no subject here, you can decide to leave this subject as it is. And here too, you can enter the same subject. This is just how you will receive the email. So you can decide what elements you want to include here. When the email is sent, it will include this so that it helps you to know exactly where the email was sent from. This will help when you have so many forms on the website and you want to know exactly where this was sent from. So the default test is this email was sent from a contact form on, so you can change everything here, such as this email was sent from a contact form on your website. The same applies to the second one. And this one is an autoresponder. It is optional anyway. This is how it works. The moment they send their message, this will also be sent to them. And then later you can follow up with your real message as a reply to the message that has been sent. So you can equally modify that section to here as well. The next section is messages. These are the default messages that will appear based on certain conditions. For instance, when the user sends the email, this is the message that will be displayed to them. Thank you for your message. It has been sent. When the message fails, the error message that will be displayed is there was an error trying to send your message. Please try again. And then as you can see, the following are equally messages for different conditions. So you can modify them accordingly. But usually these are just okay. These are additional settings. Normally you wouldn't actually use this section. And this multi-step settings, multi-step has to do with a form that has multiple steps as the name implies. For instance, on this page, we have just one step. When the user submits details on the first page, that is the end. For multi-step, they will be able to go to the next page and add more details. So if you have such a feature, then you can modify that here as well. And that one also works in this way. As they continue to send the message, if you enable this progress bar, then it will be shown to them that they have been able to make, let's say, 50% progress, 70%, so that they know what is ahead of them, the amount of work that they have executed, and what they are yet to add. So having gone through all these and modified as you deem appropriate, then you can save the changes. Update the changes. So let's take a look at what we have done so far in this lesson. So from the home of the dashboard, we can go to visit site and open this in a new tab. And this is what we have accomplished so far. We have a sliding section, a services section, pricing plans. You can add more features, testimonials section, a call to action button, then a block section. And finally, we have a contact form section as well. The last step is to add our domain name to our website. How do we do this? Check the description of the video. Get domain name. Click on that link. And here you can buy domain names at relatively cheaper prices.
So enter the desired name of your website, search for it, and then buy it. You can now sign in to your account, go to domain list, and then identify the domain name that you want to use. In this case, I want to use this domain name for this website. So click on manage, then click on advanced DNS. Now there will be a communication between our domain name and our website so that our website will display the domain name. So to do that, you can delete the existing records here using this button and click on add new record. Select a record. Now for host, enter at. Then for IP address, go to your Cloudways hosting account and then you see public IP at the application credentials. Similarly, you can go to servers, click on the server and then you see public IP. You click on the same thing, go back to Namecheap domain and then paste the IP address. Click on this symbol. The last one is to add a CNAME record. So click on add record here, go to CNAME record, at the host section enter www, at the target section enter your domain name. In this case, this is the domain name I'm using and save changes. Let's go back to our Cloudways account. Go to applications, select the website you just created and go to domain management. Enter your domain name here. Click on save changes. As we have updated the domain name, let's now open our website by entering the domain name. So the domain name has been successfully pointed to the website, but there's an issue here. You see that there's a warning here that the website is not secure. The connection is not secure. Let's work on this. Go to your Cloudways hosting account and click on SSL certificate. Now you are going to install this Let's Encrypt SSL certificate. Enter an email address and enter the domain name here. Click on Install Certificate. Now we have installed our SSL certificate. The next is to click on Enable HTTPS. So click on that. Now one thing you would have to do is to upgrade your account. You notice that we are using this free of charge, but the trial period ends in three days. So you would have to upgrade your account by adding your credit card details so that you will be billed at the end of every month, which is $10 per month. So you do that and then retain your website. Make all the changes you desire to your website. And that is a simple process by which you can create a WordPress website. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel. This channel is all about website design, affiliate marketing, and generally how to make money online. So if you enjoy these topics, consider subscribing and smash the like button as this helps the channel and for others to even see this video as well. I'll see you in the next video.